morning everyone or well it's evening your time isn't it so hi everyone i hope everybody's joining one all right sorry for the slight delay my fault entirely um so for those of you that don't know me my name is ella butler um, and i'm an independent consultant obviously and a regional vice president with arbon i've actually been running my business now for nearly five years. Um, I'm a freelance makeup artist, something that I absolutely love. I'm not um, it's all being recorded, isn't it? Yeah, I think I've suddenly panicked on that I wasn't recording it. Okay, so yeah, I've been a freelance makeup artist for 14 years, totally, absolutely adore it. Um, however, I was doing about like 90 hours a week. I was kind of here, there and everywhere. Um, and I wanted to start a family. So that's kind of where Arbon really came in. Um, and my background with, with it was, I was kind of a bit I suppose I had a bit of an ego coming in as a makeup artist thinking, you know, I'll just use the product alongside what I'm doing. I'm not going to do any of these presentations or anything like that. Um, and I promptly kind of got over that, got over myself a little bit. Um, and I think that can kind of be quite common, actually, with makeup artists kind of coming in, people sort of having used a lot of things. They can be a little bit wary about just sticking to one brand. But honestly, this product line is incredible. So I'm going to get sharing my screen um, and just talk you through a little bit of my background kind of as we go as well. So. I'm just going to double check that you can see this all all right. I'm sure I'll hear from you if I can't. So um, I'm going to touch on more of a content than I am um, obviously doing any examples or anything like that. I just want to give you as much information as I can in a really short space of time. So areas of work, for example, things that I've covered myself. I do a lot of like TV, live broadcast. Um, obviously, I do weddings and things like that. And I, I you know real life situations. I do deal with like a lot of like famous faces as well. So there's been a lot of famous bottoms in my chair. Um, and it's basically because of Arbon that now I get to do this because I love it and not because I have to do it for the income anymore. So yeah, when I started the business, I was kind of running it, you know, as a byproduct of what I was doing. But then I just saw that really I needed to run it, you know, in its own right alongside what I did. And I was doing about 90 hours a week, as I say. So um, yeah, I definitely got over myself with regards to the presentation. So Arbonne itself wise, um, I've actually earned a couple of awards. I've won six incentive trips since I started. Um, been privileged to go to Vegas five times. It's incredible. I look forward to meeting you all there, whoever's going. Um, and I now have a three year old little Flynn. Um, and so I get to be like a present parent to him. And all because of Arbonne, really. So getting to do makeup because I love it. Um, and that's just amazing, isn't it? For anybody that you know does this business alongside whatever it is that you're doing, just know that you are in absolutely the right place. So, yeah. Anyway, that's enough about me and my background. Um, so, content-wise, right. So, first of all, background products that I have used to use. You know, I used everything, um, and I can honestly hand on heart saying I would not touch anything out with a barge pole anymore. I used to use all these things, and people still ask me about them. Um, and I am more than happy to kind of like put myself into a sort of the pigeonhole of just using one brand because do you know what it beats everything else out anyway. Um, and, it, and that's in terms of texture, like tones, just incredible like payoff on camera in real life. Like beauty really is all about seeing you, you know, enhancing you. And I, the thing I love most about makeup, album makeup, is that it just doesn't cover you up. It just brings the best of you out. So obviously, I discovered Arbon five years ago. I wish I'd discovered it sooner, but there we go. That's just the way things go. And um, I've yeah, I've, I've done a lot of work in the past five years. And, and in fact, I can again hand on heart say that my work has categorically improved since using all of the products. So I've got a few before and afters, which I know you're allowed to share in Australia and New Zealand. Um, so yeah, these are just some examples of all you know Arbon cosmetics before and afters. And you can see like the big transformation that comes with um, makeup design when using great products. Um, and it's not about covering the person up, it's just bringing, really bringing them out. So I've worked in, oh gosh, all sorts of different fields. So like a lot of editorial, TV, film, um, a few famous faces. I'm sure some people from New Zealand, maybe Australia as well, you'll recognise maybe a few of these. Um, and then various like, yeah, various different sort of celebrities maybe a few more celebs in England that you know you might not necessarily know overseas and then most recently um lovely lady called Helen Glover who is the Olympic gold medalist um rower really lovely lady and an incredible for it before and after she she um is an avid fan of RE9 um and it's just interesting because you kind of meet a lot of people in the line of work that I'm in that are very much glued to other brands and of course, if they're famous, they think you're just trying to kind of get what you do onto them. And of course I am, but that's because it's coming from the place of loving it and knowing that they're gonna, their skin is just going to change. And, and her skin very much has. So 
just going on to actually makeup in itself. Makeup is all an illusion. It's not meant to be that, you know, you see it on the face and you see the skin like caked in it. So these are some examples of what not to do. Okay, now I see all sorts of variations. These are not people that I've met. These are just good old Google searches. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not meant to be, you know, caking it on. And that's the great thing with Arbonne Cosmetics. It just looks flawless and it brings out the best of you, as I've said. So other examples of things I have seen and witnessed, you know, people drawing straight lines for eyebrows, people drawing eyebrows that look ex exceptionally surprised, people without eyebrows even. And, and there's all sorts of things that you know, can go on. Um, but brows really are the frame to the face. So as you can imagine, I always like, like to think of makeup as a bit of a magic wand, really. So think, you know, when you're doing makeup for yourself or for any of your clients, if you had a magic wand, what would you transform about that person's face in front of you? Um, and brows really pay, play a big part in where you start with that. So obviously people have all different brow shapes and it's not about you being, you know, a makeup artist or a beauty therapist or an esthetician and changing anything there, but just making the best of what you can. Um, and obviously with our incredible products. So these are some examples of brow types that you could be confronted with, for example. Um, and really a great rule of thumb to follow is, is this formula. So you've probably all seen variations of this floating around, but this is the best one to follow. It kind of follows in line with point A being in, in line with the edge of the eye, point B being across between the edge of the nose and the edge of the brow, and then um, the edge of the iris, right, the eyeball in line with the edge of the brow, and then point C being in line with the center of the pupil. And that really gives you those great um, boundaries for your brow definition. And obviously, each to their own, some people wear really thick brow makeup, other people have it really subtle. Um, but we've got some incredible, incredible products for brows that you know you might not necessarily have thought to use either. So a lot of eyeshadows I use on the brows, um, including Pebble, Clove, and Onyx. Um, obviously, these beauties as well. The Prime and Proper is a great product people that have got very sparse brows so actually you can use just a minimal amount almost like brush stroked in um, with a with a uh, proper brush and not using it from the um, product if you're working obviously on somebody else but just brush stroking it into where they've maybe got those little gaps and then obviously filling it through with a color that's the right tone in eyeshadow actually can just give a real subtle finish um, and then you could you know hold everything in place with the shape it up brow gels the clear brow gel and then obviously we've got the pencil as well they're all so highly pigmented, um, and I find people make a very easy switch over from some of those well-known brands that you've seen before. I won't poke, you know, mention a specific one that has some great you know, pigmented shadows, as people might know, but people move over quite happily once they see the payoff of these and the results, um, and everything lasts so incredibly well. So as you can see in this image, um, before and after with brows, it makes a big difference to then the structure of the face. And really, that's what you're trying to do. That's the kind of start point. Um, so a lot of people will do their foundation first, or they'll put the foundation on first, then they'll do the rest of the makeup, and then you know they might do their eyes after. But actually, in terms of kind of making sure that when you are on camera, um, which is obviously the, work, the line of work that I work in, you want it to be really, really neat. So actually, it makes sense to do the brows and then the eyes first tidy away any of the residue and actually for that you can use a little bit of primer um, on a q-tip um, just to take it all away or obviously any of the makeup remover um, being careful not to you know move your eye makeup um, and that way you've already prepped the eye actually if you're using the primer underneath and it just dusts away any of the excess and then you can put your foundations and everything on your cc creams um, and it just makes everything really really neat and that is the area of specialty that I kind of am in it's high definition makeup so it is makeup that looks incredible on camera but also real in real life which is quite a crucial thing um, so again the eyes if you had a magic wand now everybody has you know different eye shapes um, different colored eyes all sorts of things these are some examples of different eye types that you can have and also whether they're set quite close together more wide apart, um, more protruding, slightly downturned. And you know what, there's so many varieties of that, you know, <laughs> wide set, downturn, there's so many variations. And you can be confronted, of course, with all sorts of different things. So again, makeup with eyes is really about creating the illusion um, of pretty much kind of the opposite of what somebody has. So if somebody's got deep set eyes, you're trying to bring them further forward. If they've got quite um, protruding eyes, you're kind of trying to set them back a little bit. And all makeup really works on the basis of like light and dark. So it's about bringing things that are set back further forward and bringing things that are further forward 
that little bit more set back so it gives the illusion of maybe more open or more wide whatever the you know whatever the thing that you're being confronted with and and typically um a great eye shape is is actually quite balanced um in terms of its width across the face so just to give you an example and show you this so for example if you've got an eye's width in the middle that can be that's a nice quite balanced eye some people have them slightly closer together um, and some people obviously have them slightly further apart so again you're trying to do kind of a little bit of the opposite if somebody's got eyes that are further apart you're trying to maybe close them off a little bit and give a bit more balance to the face and likewise if they are closer together you're trying to widen them and, and elongate them and actually you know the most aesthetically pleasing if you like um, eye shape is the almond eye so what we're kind of trying to achieve on people really is give them that balance and give them that almond eye although obviously everybody has various you know different things you know, various variations different things that you're confronted with including colors and so one thing i would say to massively um get kind of familiar with so download this is simply um a downloadable on on google um it's just a color chart so colors of eyes um you know you're going to have green eyes you're going to have blue eyes and you're going to have brown and then you're going to have some variant variations within that and obviously you're going to have greens that are slightly more yellow blues that are slightly more green and, and browns that have a bit of a mixture in. So what you're looking at with this is that the complementary tones are the opposite side. So for example, obviously you're not going to put you know bright red eyeshadow on um, on a green eye, but opposite colours um, being sort of slightly on the plummy tones. You know those kind of colours work really well. Likewise on blues, opposite tones of being sort of burnt browns and more goldens work really really well. Brown eyes you can kind of pretty much get away with anything, but there are certain tones that just really make it pop, like real blues and, and things like that. So, of course, it's each to their own. Some people will want um, what they want, if relevant to what you think that would look best on them. But these are some good guides. Um, I'm sure that you're gonna be able to watch this back or you can be screenshotting things. But again, these are things that you can easily find actually on Google just to kind of keep um, in your files, just so you've got something to reference there. Um, and obviously the products for eyes, well, are amazing. So again, things that just last so incredibly well are very well pigmented. And actually just something that I'm going to mention that you might not necessarily think to use on the eyes, which is my little light sa lightsaber. Um, so Prime and Proper, obviously, is meant for the eyes. Amazing for gluing everything on. And it does not budge. I have brides that ball their eyes out. Um, and also, likewise, people under really like hot conditions. Um, so obviously lighting when you're filming. And this just keeps everything in place. And actually, you can use it around the lips as well. It's a great little one to kind of keep things you know, set where you want them to be. Likewise, if you've got somebody that's actually really, really, really oily, um, I get confronted with a lot of people that, in their own words, describe themselves as oil slicks. Um, and this little miracle powder is amazing. So personally, I will, before doing anything else for somebody's eye makeup, if they are that, you know, that way, I'll pop a little bit of mattifying powder on the um, the deepest part of their lid just to keep everything really, you know, absorbing of sheen throughout the day. And then I'd prime and proper, and then I'd go from there with the rest of the makeup. Now, obviously, you've got various shades that have got a nice sheen, and various shades that have got um, a more matte finish. And what I would just say is a real good rule of thumb with um, eyeshadows is that anything with any kind of shine on it, really, you should be keeping just to this section of the eyes. You don't want anything with a real shine too high up. Anything with shine actually sets things further forward because it captures the light more. Um, and anything that's more matte actually kind of absorbs um, that light. So what you're trying to not do is obviously deflect light around an area that's more protruding, which is obviously the brows. And I see this, this mistake made a lot where people will put um, something really shiny underneath the brow bone and then they'll give themselves a smoky eye and all that it ends up looking is a little bit bulbous on the brow and a little bit punched on the eyelid. So you want to kind of make sure that you're doing makeup for the logic of what it's there to create that illusion. So bringing something further forward with sheen um, and setting it further back when you're trying to make it that little bit more smoky. And obviously with the eyeliner pencils, I mean, they last incredibly well anyway, and there's such a lovely variety of shades. You can double up, you know, shading all across the lid with these and then double up with the shadow. But actually what's quite nice is when you've um, done your liner, to use the, um, the sheer pressed powder just tapped in, it keeps everything completely glued into place. So that's just a nice little tip, especially for underneath the eye. Again, if somebody's always complaining about their eye makeup sliding around, it doesn't anyway with these, but just for their peace of mind, like add that little bit in and for yours, 
and it real, I mean, it won't budge. I've had brides that quite happily go to bed with their makeup on in, in, at night, wake up the next morning, everything's still in immaculate place. Um, and well, what else to say about the mascara other than it's just incredible. It's the best mascara I've ever used. Um, I get people always say to me, oh, you're not worried about the fact that it's not waterproof. Um, and you know, I've used it on so many people, I've never had any problems. And one great tip with mascara application is when you're doing this yourself, obviously you can do this by looking down at a mirror you know, in front of you, actually right down here, work the actual brush downwards first on the top of the lashes so that you're curling the root of the lash kind of up like that. And then when it comes to obviously looking at your mirror straight on, you're brushing it back up the other way. That way you get a really lovely natural bend and just give it a really good wiggle through. Um, you can get really, really deep into the root and it makes it really lovely and um, like a density of hair. It just gives the, the illusion of just so much volume of hair. Um, but yeah, I've never had any problem with anybody having it streamed down their face or anything like that. But of course, if Arbonne were to bring out a waterproof mascara, that would be amazing as well. Um, and who knows? So yeah, the brush is amazing and you will get people switch in a shop from whatever it was they were using before if you even just let them do demos with that. Um, obviously, if you're using it on other people, you need to make sure that you're using disposables and obviously we've got the little samples as well. So yeah, products for eyes, I would never go back um, to anything else. And of course, if you do get those people that pop along and sort of say, you know, oh, you know, color spectrum, I know a lot of makeup artists do mention the color spectrum. So of course, you know, again, if Arbor were to bring out a huge variety of shades that we don't have right now, brilliant. But I found that every single thing that we've got in here covers a multitude of people from all different um for all different reasons for all different demographs and for all different interests and things like that so i've never felt limited at all we've got a lovely variety of shades so again with eyes you know it makes a big difference you're bringing somebody's features out now it's, i love all of these people before um, but obviously you can see that there is a big difference after when you've got things on in the right place um that, you know lashes here just it looks like a totally different eye doesn't it okay so skin Again, if you had a magic wand for skin, um, what some people would love to do if they had a magic wand, well, obviously that's where our skincare comes in. And although I'm a makeup artist and I'm not, you know, a skincare specialist myself, there are those within our bond that I know have got incredible results. So of course, I can reference those people, I can connect those people up. Um, and so, you know, I'm not making any kind of claims for skin or anything like that, but I am absolutely sharing the abilities that our skincare products have, even though just me as a makeup artist, in, in essence, I'm a, I'm a face painter there, you know, I will reference those things as well, of course. So it all starts with skin. So you've got different face shapes um, and, you know, people will describe themselves in all sorts of funny ways, but basically these are the, the you know, the, the well-known face shapes. And again, there's going to be variations. And again, what you're trying to do is create the illusion of, of slightly the opposite. So somebody that's oval is quite lucky because actually there you're just trying to kind of enhance um, somebody that's got slightly more of an oblong face maybe you're trying to make it look slightly shorter and a little bit wider to give that balance to give the illusion of it being a bit more oval somebody that's rounder you're trying to kind of like maybe bring it in a little bit and elongate it a bit again somebody that's square you're trying to soften so all these different examples that you can see here you're trying really to give them a slightly softer um, look or a slightly more angular look, depending on what they you know they have, um, and obviously that's where products come in as well. So, I mean, we have so many incredible skincare products. I use every single one of these um, to some degree on everybody. Um, so I always start off with the primer. Some people just need texture evening rather than tone, um, and and the makeup primer is amazing. So it's brilliant for mattifying as well. So I always put that primer on first and then build from there in terms of the, the thinnest um, textured product first. So, and that really depends on the person and what I'm trying to achieve. So for example, somebody that's more oily, you probably want to go more with the Got You Covered Mineral Powder Foundations because it's great to buff in, it helps to glue everything into place and obviously if they're a bit more oily, that just really helps to suck that up as well. Um, and using the mattifying powder first is brilliant. Um, sheer glow highlighter I would always put off first in that instance because you know if, you, if you've got a, um, a powder product on the skin and then you try to put something liquid on top it's going to kind of go a bit strange so it's best to put that one on first when it comes to using the liquid foundations that's great for more normal to dry skins I have used it on oily skins and it's perfectly fine it's just each to their own preference 
That way you can mix in sheer glow with it because it's a liquid product or you could use it before or after. And I do it again, dependent on the person's preference, I guess, as to what kind of finish they want. Um, and then you've got CC creams, brilliant little things, great for mums on the go that just want something quick that they can do without really having to even look in the mirror. Um, and then I would use these things maybe in conjunction with each other, dependent on how much somebody needs coverage. Um, obviously with concealing, doing it last actually, because it's a thicker product, so you don't need very much of it when you've done everything else first. And sometimes you don't need it at all because in fact you've built so well with other layers um, that you then don't need concealing actually. So it's just, again, it's each to their own. Um, and I would always finish the skin one of two different ways. So I'd always use either a sheer press powder just to mattify that last little bit if they want that, um, or sitting pretty translucent powder, um, which I would use more in a real life situation. It has got a little bit of a sheen to it, which is lovely. Um, on camera, sometimes people can say that they don't want anything shiny or and makeup artists might mention that. So that one does have a little bit of a sheen in it, but it's beautiful. So use it in real life situations and obviously for on camera, potentially just not dependent on the situation. So how to determine your skin's undertone? Basically, you just kind of have to look at like your wrist area. So you can see here like what's obviously looking quite cool and what's obviously looking quite warm. Um, and it, it gives you a reference here. If you've got blue or purple veins, that's quite a cool. Neutral tones can be more bluey, greeny. And then warm can be green or olive. And so obviously you're going to be confronted with people of all different skin tones. Um, and the one thing I would say is, you know, we've got a great variety of shades um, in foundations and everything with albums. So you know what to discount because, you know, one side somebody's definitely not going to be and you likewise, you know what they're not going to be the other side. So you might be confronted with, say, three or four shades that you think that they might be, yeah? Um, and the best way really to kind of work that is to just put a few blobs on the back of your hand and then work it onto their neck. So, you know, you, you guys, obviously you're out in Australia, you've probably got way more tan than I have at the moment. We just have no sunshine in England. It's completely missed the outside. Um, but what you're always wanting to do is color match to their neck because people can be all different shades kind of going on everywhere really. Um, and if you color match to the hand, it's totally wrong. If you color match to the face, it can be completely different to the neck. So go by the neck and as in you're working up, you're working actually on the face downward, downward strokes, downward outward strokes. But in terms of what you're trying to do, you're trying to bring this color up rather than this color down. Um, and that's where the whole tide mark thing can come in. So definitely work that way up. So in terms of contouring, um, bronzing and blushing, you know, again, it's not about um, making people look like they have got all these lines going on and off on their face. It's about this kind of thing that you see in front of you here. So it's about subtlety. It's about creating depth. So as you can see here, this is a perfect example actually of what light can do and depth can do to the face. So something that's like shining a light, yeah, onto the face here, for example, could be sheer glow highlighter, yeah? And then also in here, this could be bronzer, it could be a deeper foundation, but because it looks brighter, it sets it further forward. And because this looks darker, it sets it further back. So that's really the kind of illusion that you're creating all around the face here. You can see on the eyes, even that's, you know, it's the same um, as contouring here. It's just done with shadow here. Same here, giving a little bit of a dewy effect. So it just looks like there's a bit more depth here than it does here, likewise on these. And obviously the variation of that that you do is dependent again on the person and, and what you're, you're trying to achieve. This is a, you know, <clears throat> an exact sort of way of doing, um, contouring and highlighting but of course you're not going to send anybody out looking like this you know you're going to be blending everything and actually some people don't even want to touch trying things like this because one they don't necessarily need to and two you know you could open up a whole can of worms really as to what you're meant to be doing where but in essence you know creating balance creating light and depth is what the whole point of makeup is all about so just some rules of thumb slight rules of thumb as some examples Again, with hearts, what you're trying to do is like knit people in in different places, oblongs, you're trying to shorten them a little bit by giving them a bit of depth here. And, and then you can see all the different examples. So it's really, it really is all about an illusion. Obviously products um, for contouring, blushing and bronzing, obvious things like the bronzer. Um, the mineral powder foundation is great. If somebody has got the mineral powder foundation on as a foundation, you can then build obviously the depth into their cheekbones, contouring and things like that. Um, with another mineral powder foundation. Likewise, I will do that with liquid foundations because a lot of the time people can make this mistake of putting um, blushes sort of here. So 
to try to chisel the cheekbones. Now, I don't know about you, but nobody really blushes here. I've never seen anybody blush right there. You blush here. So you're meant to be blushing for the apples of the cheeks and then having the contouring kind of going into the cheekbones here to give the illusion that they're just slightly more sunken. And obviously in real life, they're sunken with a slightly deeper looking skin tone. So that's what you're trying to achieve with makeup as well. So you do that with either mineral powder foundation or the liquid foundations. So it, the rule is like wet on wet or dry on dry. Um, and obviously then when you've done a wet makeup, like a liquid makeup, you can always put a dry over the top of it, but just don't do it the other way around because you'll end up with all sorts kind of going on on the skin. Um, and then obviously blushes, we've got some incredible shades. And I would say the good rule to, to follow with um, blushing is to go by their lip tone. So for subtlety, go by the lip, their lip tone so that you've got something that's kind of like following suit with their colouring. Okay, so this is an illusion of um, depth and, and light. Um, and you can see the difference that makes around the eyes. You can see the difference that rate makes around the hairline, cheekbones, even to a certain degree around the lips, which is what I'm going to come on to next, because you're still trying to create the same illusion when it comes to lips as well. Um, so hopefully, yeah, you can see that there. So lips, if you had a magic wand, you know, you're going to get people with all different lip shapes. You're going to get people that are unbalanced, um, thin, lower, you know, oval lips, great. Um, maybe not such a protruding um, fulcrum here. And so, you know, not necessarily such a strong Cupid's bow, um, downturned lips, upturned lips, all sorts of different things. And again, you're trying to create balance. So this is an illusion of making the lip look fuller where it's slightly thinner and thinner maybe where it's slightly fuller. Yeah, creating that balance. Because you could, again, you could have one lip thin, one lip bigger. Um, this is a, a what not to do. So I found this one online. I don't know who this woman is. So like, this is an example of what not to do. Overlining in a not great way, right up on the skin, obviously. And yeah, doing anything way too dark for the lip tone. So my advice with the colours, i go for, again, lip um, pencils that are the same tone as their lip or as close as you can get. Because that way, when naturally people lick lips, eat lips, weddings, kiss lips, whatever, um, they, it's, it's obviously going to move around a little bit. It's always going to with lips, yeah? Now, they last incredibly well, but it's always going to move a little bit. So if you go with something that's the same colour as their lip tone, it's less obvious. Um, and obviously, you can build as well like that. I would always say to people to make sure that the night before they're going to have any makeup kind of put on, or even in the morning, you buff the lips a little bit with, um, with pop some water on. Obviously, if it's Christmas, we can use our amazing festive line um, lip treatment. Um, but buff your, buff your lips, pop a little bit of water on, buff them off with a dry towel and then pop the intelligence lip treatment on because it's amazing to give the lips a real nice plump effect. Perfect base for lipsticks um, and lip polishes. So obviously we've got a huge variety of shades and everything just, well, it tastes as good as it smells, doesn't it? <laughs> so these are some examples. Um, this is an example of what I had to do here with this lady, which was to create um, a slightly thinner lip. She was really conscious of her lips being a bit fuller. And she wanted to make sure that her eyes were the focus on the day and not feel like she had sort of bigger lips um, on, the, on the day. She just wanted something to, to, you know, with a little bit of sheen, but nothing exaggerating them, I should say. So we just went with a slightly darker shade um, and I actually sort of slightly underlined her lips rather than going on the true line. So that's another little trick that you can do. You can slightly underline, slightly overline, but not too much. Um, and then obviously darker shades make things look smaller. Um, and then lighter shades make things look a little bit bigger. Likewise, so do shades with sheen. Um, and so that is everything. I hope that's been really helpful for you all. I know that we've not done any demos, but as I say, I wanted to kind of make it more about content so that you can use all these tips in your businesses. And yeah, I really look forward to meeting some of you in Las Vegas. Bye, everyone.